Okay, we have here an interesting integral. This one was sent to me by Sid. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of the binomial coefficient of the ceiling function of x plus one over two, but we want the reciprocal dx. And I think the notation's clear, but I just wanna go over it just so that we're all on the same page, just because you don't see the binomial coefficient in an integral that often. We have this definition for the binomial coefficient or n choose k, just writing it in terms of factorials but we have it to the minus one power, so it's just gonna be the definition flipped, the reciprocal, so that's all we need here. So I could go ahead right away and turn this into factorials. I think I'm just gonna put it off a minute just because this is a little bit messy too, so we'll leave it and then we'll flip it into this notation in a little bit. What I wanna deal with first actually is the ceiling function. If I break up our integral on bounds just separated by one, then we can simplify that and then we can do this piece. So how I wanna do it is we'll create a generic integral going from an integer n to n plus one, so we're only separated by one. And then doing that, for this ceiling part, if all of our x values are between n and n plus one, we know how to use the ceiling and round it up, we're just gonna round it to the upper bound, so it's just gonna become n plus one, but we're adding one, so it's actually gonna become n plus two. And then we still have two for this like k value here. We'll flip it in a minute. But we're gonna have an infinite number of these integrals, so we're gonna sum all these. Starting with the first one is gonna be zero, going all the way to infinity. But now this whole thing here, this is gonna be a constant. So what we'll do is we'll take this outside of the integral. Then what's up to the integral, we can just take care of really quick, because now we're just integrating one. So we get x evaluated from n to n plus one. When you evaluate this kind of thing, it always works out that it's just one. So what we can do is basically ignore the integral and just sum up this thing. So now I think at this point, let's convert it into factorials. So doing that, we're gonna have the sum from zero to infinity. Now like this is gonna be our K value in this formula and our N value, I guess I should probably have a different variable so it's not confusing, but we're calling it n there, so we're really gonna replace n with n plus two. So let's see how it looks using this second piece right here. So we're gonna end up with n being n plus two. So let me just write it out to be clear. So if we plug in n plus two minus k here, where k is two, so we have this thing factorial, then k factorial, so that's gonna be two factorial, all over n factorial, which again is n plus two factorial. But now let me just clean it up a little bit before we simplify. So n plus two minus two, that's just gonna be n factorial. Two factorial is just two, right? Two times one, so we have a two right there. Then here, n plus two factorial, let me expand that out. So n plus two factorial, I'll write as n plus two times n plus one times n factorial. That way we get cancellation here and here. And now let me just clean it up a little bit more. So the two I can take out front as a constant. So we'll bring that in front of the sum here. And then we'll do partial fractions on the fly. I'm gonna create these terms in order to cancel. So if I do n plus two minus n plus one, this whole thing here, the n's are gonna cancel and this is just gonna be a one. So let's see if I can finish it off up in this region up here, get a little space. So we'll take this and we'll break it up. We'll break up the fraction. I'll leave it in one sum. So we'll have this all in the sum, and then we'll have, for the first one, n plus two over the same denominator. And then for the second one, we'll have n plus one, same denominator. But then we can cancel n plus twos here, leaving a one. Cancel n plus ones here, leaving a one. But what I can do now is let's just expand out some terms, plugging in some n values to see how it's gonna work. So like, starting with n equals zero, we're gonna have one over one, minus, here it's gonna be one over two. And then for the next one, n equals one, it's gonna be plus one over two minus one over three. And now let me just write out like a million terms so we can see what's happening. Okay, I think I wrote out enough terms to see what's going on. So we can just start canceling things right from the beginning. One half minus half is zero. One third, one fourth is zero. And just keep going. And what's gonna happen, we're gonna cancel all the way at the end, I guess we'll have, what will we have? I think we'll have, like this will cancel with something, but we'll have this left over. 
But as n is going to infinity, this term is going to zero, so we don't care about that. All we care about is one, and of course it is two. So just multiply that in, and for my final solution on it, we just get two, and that's it. Okay, there you go. Thanks again to Sid for the problem. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.